In order to stay in compliance with New York City Local Law 77, the responsible person is required to perform the following task on their cooling tower water system. We will break down the necessary actions to be taken and explain how to fill out the appropriate paperwork for these tasks. Let's begin. Turn to Section 3 of the Log Binder to find the Routine Monitoring Checklist along with an instructional guide just in case you forget any of these steps. You will notice that there is one checklist for every week of the year. These sheets must be filled out every seven days and even if just one of them is missing, you will receive a violation. Fill out your full name and date at the top of this page and then begin answering each of the corresponding questions. Question 1. Wetted surfaces are free of organic material, biofilm, algae, scale, sediments, silt, dust deposits, organics such as oils and greases, and other visible contamination. Check yes if no or low amounts of contaminations exist. Check no if contamination is visible. If you check no and contamination is visible, in comments you will write where it exists, when, and how it will be removed. Question 2. Tower basins are free of organic material, biofilm, algae, scale, sediments, silt, dust deposits, organics such as oils and greases, and other visible contamination. Check yes if basins are clean or mostly clean. Check no if basins maintain contamination. If you check no and contamination is visible, in comments you will write where it exists, when, and how it will be removed. Question 3. Drift eliminators are free of organic material, biofilm, algae, scale, sediments, silt, dust deposits, organics such as oils and greases, and other visible contamination. Check yes if drift eliminators are clean. Check no if drift eliminators need cleaning. If you check no and contamination is visible, in comments you will write where it exists, when, and how it will be removed. Question 4. Chemical dosing and control equipment is sufficient. This means that you have proper automatic control, no leaks are present, and it is capable of delivering chemical and bleeding the system as designed. Check yes if you maintain proper control equipment and it will function correctly when required to do so. Check no if chemical equipment is in poor condition, offline, has failed, or is not capable of monitoring and controlling the system when in operation. If you check no, in comments, write why what needs to happen, and when it will be back in operation, and that you notified the qualified person and owner. Question 5. Storage and delivery of treatment and chemicals is sufficient. Check yes if chemical area is safe. Chemicals are contained by chemical containment or spill pallet. Pumps are secure and no leaks exist. All drums are properly labeled and SDS sheets are present at location. Check no if the chemical area is unsafe, whereas no chemical containment or spill pallets exist. Pumps are hanging and not secure or leaking, drums are improperly labeled, or no SDS sheets exist. If you check no in the comments section, write what needs to be corrected, when it will be resolved, and that you notified the qualified person immediately. Question 6. Bleed off system is sufficient. Check yes if bleed is operational and keeping conductivity in range. Check no if system conductivity is out of range. If you check no in comments, write what is wrong who was contacted, and when it will be repaired. Weekly Bacteria Test The responsible person is required to take a bacteria test each week, at least one hour after biocide has completed its feed. It must be taken from location as specified in Section 2-3 of this Appendix C Log Binder or Section 3-10 of the Water Management Plan Binder. You must read the test 48 to 72 hours after test is taken, and the reading must be below 10,000 CFU per milliliter, or about 50 dots. Call your water treatment provider if it is greater than 10,000 CFU per milliliter. For instructions on how to take this test, please see the training on water testing or refer to Section 8 of this Appendix C log binder. Weekly Chemical Usage this must be taken each week and logged on this sheet at the bottom of the routine monitoring checklist. This is usage and not inventory. The city wants to know how much volume of each chemical is used every week. The amount that should be used per week is listed on the directions for use found in section 2-2 of this Appendix C log binder. To calculate the usage, you use the previous week's inventory minus current week's inventory. This number equals the chemical usage. Record this on the checklist. Two methods of gathering inventory. The first is accomplished by shining a flashlight on top of the container and looking on the side of the container to see where the light hits the chemical level. 
match the chemical level up to the volume number strip on the drum, and this is this week's level. Simply subtract this week's levels from last week's levels and record the difference as amount used and write this amount in the checklist for each drum. If you maintain a smart controller with communications, you have a more accurate and simpler way of obtaining this inventory. Daily, you can receive an email from the controller which will maintain chemical levels of all drums in use. You retrieve the email from seven days ago and match it to this week's email and simply subtract this week's from last week's and record the difference as amount used. It's that simple. To obtain the equipment to receive these automated emails, please see your water treatment provider for a quote. This concludes the weekly inspection task to be performed and documented by your facility's responsible person. We hope that this training has been beneficial. In the near future, we will introduce new methods of documenting, including web-based reporting sites and apps that can be used on your handheld devices. These methods will only help make the documentation process easier, more efficient, and organized.